Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and today it's time for part two of the Tacoma mobile radio install, and we may even get power going to the units. Made good progress, so let's check it out. That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, I guess the opening picture kind of gave it away. We did, in fact, get power to these uh, radios and made good progress on the install. Uh, not done. Not done. Still have some cleaning up to do, some wire uh, maintenance and routing and stuff to do. But we have the radios working. The uh, FT891 is tuning the ATOS 120A uh, antenna. So uh, we're just going to go over some of the things we did. We used a lot of the same kind of techniques and things we used on my wife's Forerunner. So if you've seen the Forerunner series, uh, you're going to see some similar stuff here in this video. Uh, I didn't make this uh, series for the install as long as hers because it went into a lot of good detail on her uh, Forerunner. Um, I still have to uh, neaten up some wires. And I also still have to build a bracket like I did to hold the uh, the speaker for her car. I'm going to do the very same thing for my, my Tacoma. Uh, so I still need to build one of those, which is easy enough to do. And again, uh, detailed how to do that in the other series of videos. So, um, yeah, it's come along nicely here in the uh, Tacoma. I got the radios uh, working, uh, play with them a little bit. You know, we've had a lot of very unseasonably warm weather here in central Kentucky this year. In fact, on Christmas Day, it was at least 70 degrees, maybe 71 uh, in this area. So certainly we did not have any opportunity for a white Christmas, uh, which actually isn't that unusual in Kentucky. Uh, really, our coldest months are January and February, uh, even into the first half of March. Uh, November, December, sometimes we get snow. I mean, we've had snow as early as uh, I can remember growing up and trick-or-treating in snow uh, not heavy snow or anything but having snow and some snowfall but uh, not this year had very warm weather it's been in the 60s anywhere from 55 to 70 degrees this last couple of weeks and so i've been trying to take advantage of that and uh, and get the radios going in the, the truck so i can enjoy them so we're gonna be diving into that here uh, again in this video um, used a uh, dash mount very similar to what we put in my wife's car a different company though the uh, rego uh, fabrication didn't happen to make one for the tacoma uh, they had that really nice one for her forerunner but i found another company that also made a very nice uh, sort of similar looking dash mount for the tacoma we've already shown that and so one of the things i did as we started this uh, this install is i had the the phone mount uh, mounted on the front there you can see the the holes of this mount, uh, which was fine, but now that I'm getting the radios going, I went ahead and moved the phone mount up to the top. There are also holes along the top there, and here you can see I've uh, mounted the uh, microphone clips, uh, got the first one in there, and then mounted the second one. Uh, and the other thing that's cool about these particular clips, the way they're designed, they're, you can see they're sort of deep. Uh, they can actually hold the bell clip of, uh, of most or, or many types of handy talkie units. So if you had a handy talkie that you were doing something with, you could slip it right in that clip. Uh, and so we might take advantage of that with some of the off-road stuff we're going to be doing. I've got the 2 meter, 70 centimeter cantenna uh, installed, routed the cabling down, used some transparent, uh, relatively transparent uh, Gorilla Tape on there. I was able to route that cable through the cab um, vent in the back. The Tacomas and some other vehicles have vents uh, in the, the sides or the back. So I routed this, uh, was able to just drop it down between the cab and the uh, the uh, the bed and uh, managed to grab it with my fingertips and get it pulled through there. And it was uh, a big enough opening to accept the uh, SO239 connector. So I routed that through there. So it comes right in through there. Uh, this is all behind the driver uh, rear seat. I did take out, there's a, a plastic piece that's formed that goes in there. And gives you a little bit of a storage cubby, but I took that out. It gave me a whole lot more room. Uh, and I made the, the saw that we made the plate to hold the radios and the uh, auto off uh, unit as well for the 2 meter 70 centimeters. This is the, uh, the K400 diamond mount 
that I uh, have used for the um, ATOS uh, 120. Use my uh, wire wheel there to uh, remove a little bit of paint here on the edge of the door. Make sure you go all the way down to bare metal <clears throat> so that you install this antenna because it needs a very good ground. When people struggle with the ATOS type antennas, it's usually because of grounding. And, uh, and so as long as you get a really good ground, you're in good shape. So you can see I've got the antennas installed. Give a preview shot of, of how things more or less ended up. Uh, and it should work really well. I wanted everything on the driver's side. One reason I wanted the, uh, the antenna uh, in a good location, uh, for me at least, I wanted to be able to see it, as we'll see in the, in the rear view mirror. Now here in the, uh, in the, in the front, I've got the uh, pigtails for power for both radios uh, connected to the uh, upgraded battery, and they terminate in uh, Anderson power poles. And then I'm going to run some cables through the firewall, through the, the master grommet on the firewall, uh, which was a little bit of a trick, but if you just uh, stick with it, you can get it to go. And, uh, and they plug in. Of course, these are all, all fused and everything as well. So i uh, got all that set up and, uh, and then set to work on coming through the firewall. Now, again, it was a bit of a trick. I, I was looking even at alternative locations to run and thought I had found one, but it, it wasn't going to work out that well. So bit the bullet and uh, it was able to work both cables uh, you know, through this master grommet in the firewall. Now, the one cable I had for uh, that I ended up using, I guess, for the uh, the uh, ICOM ID5100, I was able to run it from the uh, engine compartment into the cab. Okay, it's sort of that thinner one you can see right there in the center of the screen. The other one for the FT891 Yesu, uh, because of the way it was pre-done and some things, I had to come from the interior out to the firewall. Uh, and that's what you kind of see there going on. And that was a bit of a struggle. The, the first one coming in wasn't too bad. Uh, getting that second one coming back out took a little extra work and in, uh, in a, uh, a very expensive uh, wire coat hanger as a tool of choice there. But I got both of those fished through, uh, connected, and then like we did in the Forerunner, here in the Tacoma, and like most vehicles, uh, under these sort of door sill areas, you can just pop them up. They just have little pops, uh, plastic pops, and you pop them up, and you've got the races there that they've already run uh, cabling from, from the factory. So I... Uh, I uh, took off the, the one seat belt bolt there at the bottom so I could pull that piece off. Took out the front and rear, as you can see here, and it gave me access to those raceways to, to run cabling. And uh, ran the power cables through there. Uh, of course, I've got the ATOS attached to the, the back passenger uh, door. Brought it down around the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the rubber uh, grommet piece, you know, for the door uh, seal. Uh, and then took it into the raceway. And then, you know, took uh, everything back on into this rear compartment where the radios are. Uh, remember, the 2-meter, 70-centimeter cantina comes in through the, the back uh, port, uh, the uh, air pressure relief uh, port. So there's the radios and the auto off mounted to the board, brought everything in. I've just got some foam and stuff in there right now because I'm still going to finalize uh, some positioning and how I'm going to tie it all down. And I still have to do cable maintenance. And, uh, and then some, some fine tuning. And then we'll, uh, we'll show some testing and actually using the radios in the field. That's about it for this one. We're going to wrap it up in the final segment here, folks. We'll see you right now. All right, folks, we're going to wrap this one up. This is Chris, KY4CKP, the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. That is it for part two of the mobile install in the Tacoma. We'll be finishing things up with a part three, and that should wrap it up uh, completely. So we'll see you down the log, 73.